Hi, Cancer. Happy Aquarius season, happy February. I don't wanna say anything because I don't want you to feel like I'm being judgmental. Let's just look at the cards. Take a deep breath. Let's see what comes up. Good. And then, two of pentacles, six of pentacles. Glad I didn't say anything. Nine of swords. <clears throat> Eight of Swords, very glad I didn't say anything. Four of Wands, Three of Pentacles. Fantastic, bottom of the deck is the Queen of Pentacles and the Queen of Cups, followed by the King of Pentacles. Okay, so. Let me show you. First up we have the Two of Pentacles and the Six of Pentacles. I'm going to be very frank with you. It doesn't matter what happened before the full moon. You were not paying attention. You are stressing and have been stressing, especially about money. Here's the rub. It doesn't matter if money is good or not you have an urge regardless of how things are going you have the urge to be extremely extremely codependent you want to cling you want way more than anything that anyone is entitled to or way more than your relationship with whomever can withstand, but you want it. <clears throat> mm -hmm. To the point where you are willing to be what a friend of mine called or her mother calls a dead deer. Let me explain. A man goes hunting for a deer. He stalks the deer, he camps out, he climbs trees, he brings food along, he tracks this animal <clears throat> after choosing the one that he would like to track for quite some time. And then he taking his time, finds the opportune moment, and kapow. He then takes said deer and chops its head off, stuffs it, and mounts it to a wall. Fantastic. That same man is sitting at dinner with his family, and the doorbell rings, and on his porch is a dead deer with its head severed uh, just waiting to be stuffed and mounted to the wall. Now what's interesting is the man's reaction to both instances. In one he has taken quite a lot of time and effort to ensure this said deer on the wall. Now, if that same deer were to show up dead and decapitated at his door, even though it is the same exact deer with the same antlers, which of course the man obviously likes, Instead of thinking, oh my, I should stuff this and put this on my wall, you would have that same person uh, perhaps rushing to the phone to call the police. Now, we don't aspire necessarily to be uh, taxidermy objects. It's a bit macabre but I hope you see the point. Well, what is the point? Well, let me make it even clearer. This month, you insist on being the dead deer. Okay, 
So, <clears throat> what I was saying was, you really, even though I know you don't want to, circumstances, the way things have been going, money, just emotionally where you're at, you really, really, really want to be the dead deer. You really wish you were the dead deer. You really feel like just showing up and being like, okay, uh, I give up, I give in, whatever it is, I can do it, whatever it is, just let me be near you. Can we please, can we please? Uh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I'm saying this. Um, but can someone or something just take control of my life because I need to defer to somebody right now and cling to someone and be weak and have them be strong. And guess what? <clears throat> Excuse me. Right now is the exact wrong time, exact wrong time to behave like that. The compulsion within you to be weak is so strong, so strong. And the need for you to step up and exhibit a certain amount of authority yourself, therefore bringing forth that authority within another that you would like to defer to so bad, treat people as you would want them to be and have them become that way, etc., etc. The exact wrong time. And why is it the exact wrong time? Because you have an entire year of realizing how to grow up in a relationship in front of you and this is your first major test which is probably the hardest you have to learn that no matter how weak you feel no matter how strapped for cash or strapped for affection you may feel it is undignified to run all the way down the road. Instead, we would like for our actions and our character to bring the thing or person we want at least halfway down the road to us. This is not possible if you have convinced yourself and this is why cancer clings when they do. This is not possible if you've convinced yourself that your happiness lies outside of you regardless of what sort of relationship we're talking about. You will be severely tested in February, but all through 2020, if you feel that there is an external source of happiness that you have almost achieved. What you have is an opportunity to see yourself independent of everything and therefore attract anything and everything that you want, including a stable, very giving, affirming relationship slash marriage slash kids slash business partnership that changes your life, et cetera, et cetera. You know, coming up for uh, next in line for an adoption, what, whatever it is, you can find the road out, but the only way to find that road and get out is value and self-worth and it can't, it's, I mean, there is no, I was gonna say, and it's not the kind that can be found in other people, but there's no 
value or self-worth um, when it comes to you that can be found in other people. You have a lot of work cut out for you. Every time you feel like clinging, you need to remember that whatever it is you swear is going to make you happy, going to make you feel better inside, is actually being pushed away. If what you really want is that thing or that person, that job, that friendship, that lover, to uh, be inclusive, to include you, to take you in, to accept you, to affirm you, if that's what you really want, then understand that every time you cling, every single time you're needy, you're actually going against what it is that you want most, which is you want that person, that thing to like you, to want you. Every time you cling, every time you're needy, you are doing the exact opposite of what your intended goal is. That is so important to remember that I'm gonna stop right there. Let's look at these cards. I love you. Talking to myself just like I'm talking to you. Don't take it personal. Hi, Cancer. Welcome to the second part of your reading. Only the first five minutes were on Instagram and I guess now you're thinking, geez, I wish the whole thing had been on Instagram. But there's a reason for the timing. And I'll just be really frank with you. Cancers, like Leos, are really, really difficult to advise. It almost seems like if you tell them something, and they may have had the exact same idea, but since you've now mentioned it, a Cancerian may go out of their way, out of a completely confusing sense of spite, to not do it. Simply to not feel as if somebody else's will has been exerted over them. Very sensitive to the crab trap metaphor. You don't want to get caught in the trap of somebody else's will. Now I mention that here because sometimes I've noticed with the cancer readings that midway through the month you are saying, I need a new reading because nothing was happening at the beginning of the month. And even though the information is the same, it wasn't processed because it wasn't needed. And when cancer doesn't need something, they're not very receptive. Good thing you need a lot. <laughs> That's not shade. I mean it. So how does that talk of receptivity tie into what's going on for you this month? Well, just like cancers need to be spoken to in a very distinct way, to have them still carry out what they think is good for them. In that same way that you can be, that you need to be spoken to, you have to apply that now to yourself. How are you speaking to you? Because there is a reason for this need to cling to the external. It's not just coming from nowhere. I don't ascribe to this philosophy that Cancerians are needy just because. No, I don't buy that. I think it's when there's lack. Right? So that lack, for me, I would think as an adult, comes directly from your self-talk. Because we know that lack and abundance are abstracts that are determined by our state of being, our state of feeling. So what are you saying to yourself that is making you go run and need love, affirmation, security, attention from somebody else to get away from what's going on in your own head? 
that's the part of you that you need to speak to, but you and I both know that you can't tell that part of you what to do. You have to make that part of you think it's their idea. And what's the idea you're trying to implant? This is like inception. What's the idea you're trying to put in there with the part of your se uh, self that is perhaps hormonally, chemically addicted to sadness because we know now that there's a certain cocktail of hormones and blood that runs through our system every day and our body needs it because it gets used to it. And then if you don't get the stimuli to create that certain emotion, you will, you will create micro behaviors so that stimuli will occur because you need that hit, Right? So how do you now talk that part of you into not wanting to create that cocktail? Into starting to produce an independent internal happiness? Because this month is only a test in clinginess if you refuse to stop clinging. If you start looking for other solutions and start walking sideways, you're going to find a lot that will help you. And ultimately you do, obviously, because you find a lot of power here. Sure, you're a little bit sharp, but so what? It's all good. We'll get to that. Let's look at the extended right now. <laughs> 